This is an example about probability. An investor believes that returns for an investment depends on the state of the economy. The following data are provided regarding each state and return. So we have three states, strong, no change or weak. The probability for strong is 20%. Consequently, our expected return will be 40%. No change is 50% probability and it would have a return of 10%. Weak, the probability is 30% and it will have a return of negative 20%. If you check here, you'll discover that the summation of the probability must always be 100%. We need to calculate five parts. The first one is we need to calculate expected return. Then we need to calculate variance, standard deviation or volatility, coefficient of variation, and chart pressure. Let's start with the first part. What is the formula of expected return for a, prob a probability? The formula is pretty easy. Get the summation of each your probability multiplied by its return. So I will get here the first probability, 20% times its return, 40%, plus second probability times its return, plus third probability times its return. So this will give us an expected return of 7%. The second part here is calculate the variance. So what will be the formula of the variance? We need to get the summation of the probability multiplied by open bracket each return minus the average or expected return close bracket square. So I will get here my first probability times open bracket my return 40% minus the average which we calculated in the previous point close bracket square plus second probability times open bracket second return minus the average close bracket square plus third the probability multiplied by open bracket third return minus the average close bracket square. This will give us a variance or sigma square of 4.41%. The third part of the question is calculate the standard deviation or volatility. So, our standard deviation or volatility, its symbol is sigma, and this will be the square root of sigma square, which is the square root of the variance. In the previous point, we got the variance of 4.41%. So the square root of 4.41%, it will give us a volatility or standard deviation or sigma of 21%. At the top here, we have our expected return or average return and the volatility or standard deviation, which we calculated earlier. The next part of the question here is calculate the coefficient of variation. We know that the formula of coefficient of variation is risk divided by return. How do we measure risk? This is our volatility divided by our expected return or average return. So we know that we have a risk of 21 divided by average return of 7. Don't use a percentage when you calculate coefficient of variation and sharp ratio. So it will be 21 divided by 7. This will give us 3. The last part is calculate the sharp ratio if risk-free rate is 2%. So risk-free rate will be given to you. In this example, we assume that risk-free rate is 2%. Therefore, what will be our sharp ratio if risk-free rate is 2%? Our formula of sharp ratio is our return minus risk-free divided by risk. Our return here, we will use the average, which is 7, minus our risk-free, which is 2, divided by our risk or volatility of 21. So this will give us 0.24. Remember, when you use sharp ratio, don't use a percentage. Therefore, if I have more than one investment and I compare based on sharp ratio, we choose the highest sharp ratio. The higher, the better for sharp ratio. But if we talk about coefficient of variation, all the time, the lower, the better for coefficient of variation. And you discover that Coefficient of variation and sharp ratio will always give you the same decision.